Five, four, three, two, one. Hold on to your seats. Because Good evening and welcome to the Ask Us Anything live event. My name is Sabrina Cave and I'm the Assistant Vice President for Parent Programs here at West Virginia University. Tonight, we're going to be answering your questions live. Many of you have already submitted questions and if you haven't, you can still do that in the comments sections of this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Our panelists tonight, President Gordon Gee, welcome. Thank you. Our Vice President for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Misha Poor, welcome. Our Dean of Students, Corey Ferris. Hi, Sabrina. One of our outstanding students, Savannah Lusk. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you all for being here with us tonight. Before we jump into our first question, I want to start with one because many of our viewers are already Mountaineers, but some haven't made that decision yet. So before we get started, I want to ask you, what would you share with students about our university, about why they should spend their next few years here? Well, um, you know, I think that that, uh, that is a very legitimate question because uh, this university is not for everyone, but I think it is for, the, uh, for those people who really do believe uh, that they have a real purpose in life and they, they want to uh, be able to expand on that purpose by helping people and developing a, a real sense of a place and opportunity. Um, you know, it's a remarkable institution, as I always tell everyone, it's Mr. Lincoln's university established by Abraham Lincoln to really build communities. And uh, as a land-grant institution, we uh, have a very special responsibility to the 1.8 million West Virginians, but also to uh, a wider world to make certain that the world is a little bit better. So coming here gives people an opportunity, I think, to find their place to find uh, opportunity. They will not get lost in this institution because we don't allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. the, I'll chase them down. if we're, That's we're, right, we know uh, you will. Uh, we, we have to, but I think the most important thing is the fact that it is a place in which uh, creativity abounds and opportunity exists, and, and we do it in a very fun and, uh, and enticing atmosphere. Very good. Misha, what do you think? Well, the first thing I'd say is what are you waiting on? I mean, at the end of the day, we have three universities, three campuses. We have three doors. Of course, we have Potomac State, we have our tech in Beckley, and we have our main campus. And there's a place for you wherever you want to be. You just have to find out which one that is. But WVU, we believe that our students have so much value to offer. We have a student from, and we have students from across the nation, and we speak about 150 languages here. And so you have so much diversity, so much camaraderie. Come on, what are you waiting for? That's what I'd say. Great. Thank hey, you. Hey, you're all right. We're going <laughs> to hang out with you all night. Good answer. Yeah. What do you think, Dean? There we are. Well, uh, for me, WVU is the gateway to the state, to the country, to the rest of the world. And so whatever a student wants, we've got 380 some majors. Um, we've got opportunities to study abroad. We've got 400 plus clubs and organizations. And so it's the gateway to, to students' future. And so come through our doors and then we'll open up the rest of the world. So I think it's exciting because we've got it all. Absolutely. Savannah, what's your experience been like? Oh man, I've been here for four years and I just say, you know, when I came here initially, I was scared because it's such a big university and I'm from such a small town. And uh, when I got here, I was excited because it can be as big as you want it, but it can be as small as you want it. Now I've gotten to know my professors on a first name basis and I've gotten that like small town feel you, you get and I am so comfortable here, but also I've gotten so many opportunities from teaching English in Uganda to cuddling Campbell's in the Middle East <laughs> and uh, the opportunity to, to get into medical school and actually just now being awarded a, a Fulbright scholarship, which will take me to Bulgaria. Just all these different opportunities and uh, people sought me out and uh, WVU saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. And you know, that's what, that's what I loved about about this institution is they see value in their students and they want to bring that to life. So that's why I really love WVU. I'm so glad that I chose it. And you were hugging camels? I was hugging camels, yeah. Oh. 
Well, that's pretty convincing stuff, right? Uh, so I mean, thank you. you can hug that, a camel. I would come here to hug a camel. Right? <laughs> you you gotta go to Bahrain to hold, uh, hug the camel, yeah, but I, know, I mean. I know, there you go. Well, remember, if you have a question that you'd like answered by one of our panelists, and also we have experts behind the scenes, just make sure that you add a comment in the video. Thanks to the more than 150 who have tuned in tonight, currently for our first Ask Us Anything Facebook Live. Let's jump into our first submitted question. I just received information in the mail about residence hall bedding, towels, and storage. Is the quality okay? Mom, Laura, wants to know that from Delaware. So I'm looking at you, Dean. What do you think about that? So Mom, Laura, absolutely, I think it's a good, there, there are good programs. I think you've got a number of different options and packages that you can choose from. Um, and so I think they're, they're, they're great, uh, they're delivered here, or you can have them delivered here um, when you place the order. The other thing to know is a, a portion of those proceeds go back to support our residence hall student government. So the students that come here then use some of those proceeds. So in some respects, it's a little bit of a fundraiser for our student government um, mm -hmm. to, to support the programs once your student arrives. Great. Did you worry about betting, Savannah? Uh, a little, but uh, we have so many different options, you know, and I would just have to say just like pick the right one for you and make sure that they're extra long or you'll get short sheeted. So. Good advice, yeah. good advice. Well, we have another question from Angela and her question is, where is the best parking for a student on campus? Mm -hmm. We're looking at you again, Dean. Well, I mean, that, to me, that question is, is um, where's the student trying to go? I mean, uh, so if they're downtown campus, there are a couple of different opportunities, whether it's in the university lots or the city lots, they're pay lots. Um, by the hour, if it's Evansdale campus, students can park at the Coliseum for free, and there's some other hourly lots and parking garages on the Evansdale campus. And again, that's if they're looking to go someplace on campus. Uh, of course, if they're looking off campus, then most of those businesses have parking lots, or, or it's within walking distance, or a student can take the bus or the PRT, depending on where they're trying to go. Great. And Savannah, I think this question might be for you, but this is from Elena. What are the best study spots on campus? Oh my, anywhere with food. Uh, <laughs> oh, you have so many different things to choose from. I love studying the Honors Hall Lounge because uh, everything's like really c quiet and chill. Uh, I like, we have uh, various coffee shops on campus. So we have the Grind and I absolutely love there getting a cup of coffee and the Lair is really chill too. So I like to sit in the Lair, kind of like surrounded by people. I kind of like that feel of always, been, it's like a good college feel. So I'd say the Grind, we also in the uh, third floor of our downtown library, we actually have Eliza's. So it's a coffee shop and it's a really cool place. So those are kind of some of my recommendations. And, and you know, we've built this new, um uh, student center you know, on our Evansdale campus. So for people who don't know, we ha we, we're one university with three campuses on this campus as mm -hmm. well as three campuses in the state. And um, and so, and we have this wonderful facility, wonderful uh, thing called the PRT. And uh, it is still one of the most forward thinking mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, transportation systems in the country. And it goes between mm -hmm between our campuses so that we're all tied in very carefully. But Evansdale Crossing has all this wonderful food and, and great places to, um, to really uh, study and do, do some really neat things. And m most of the food concepts are concepts that were developed by our own students. Absolutely. Uh, so we're very student-centered in that regard. Great. So well, Sabrina, let me, if I can throw please one do. more thing. Quite honestly, we've got a beautiful campus, and so certainly in the fall and spring semesters, there are great places on the library lawn or other green places outside mm -hmm. where students can study, where our Wi-Fi reaches outside, where they can use their laptops and um, tablets and things like that. So it's not just indoor places that we've talked about, but there are some great places just to hang out outside and study. Grab you a hammock and just chill Absolutely. out until you go to sleep. I mean, study. Just, just study. <laughs> That's a very good point, thank you. And thanks so much for asking all of these great questions this evening. Again, welcome to our live stream. We now have over more than 200 viewers that have tuned in. And remember, you can ask your questions in the comments and receive answers tonight. We're gonna actually take a quick two minute video break um, with our live streams and share a quick video with you about what you can expect your first week here on campus at WVU. So I ended up at WVU solely for the community. I feel like 
When I came on campus, I knew that this was the place that I wanted to be. Whether it's on campus or in Morgantown, there's just so much to do. And I've just met so many different people. So I feel like the next four years are definitely going to be a journey, I would say. It feels good and kind of scary at the same time. Like, I'm happy that I get the opportunity to go to college, but at the same time, it's scary because like I don't want to fail and like let other people down and like let myself down. We're not just here to go to school, we're here to do more and build character. What we're doing here is going to directly impact our state. Just like giving a few hours of your time, like this is just an afternoon, but to someone it's going to make a huge difference when they have this blanket. I know like I've made an impact in some way in the community that's given me so much. Just like WVU and Morgantown, like it's become the second home to me. You're the largest class and the best prepared class in the history of this university. So we're very proud of you. We're very proud of your achievements. And I want you to know that each one of you will make us better. It's a lot of responsibility, like, I gotta check my emails, I mean, just doing everything, like my mom's not here doing anything for me, like I gotta find, like when I'm hungry I have to go get food. I'm scared of walking up the hills because they're already killer and it's only been a few days. <laughs> I've met so many people from all over the country, different states. So to see the different cultures and even to hear the way people speak is like really cool. I'm here for school, so I just gotta keep my head in the books and you know make sure I do well and do my studies first. I'm definitely looking forward to the classes because I've heard really great things about them. Some people say it's easier, some people say like it's more laid back, but at the same time it's also a lot more strict. And I'm kind of like, oh no, I'm kind of scared about this, but at the same time I'm super excited. I can like feel like the energy here is like, it just feels like you're, it feels like right, it just feels like you're at home. Welcome back to the live stream and welcome to Jonathan from New Jersey and Adrian from Bluemont, Virginia. Thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna jump right back into some of the questions that we've received. Kim in Reston, Virginia, when is the first tuition payment due? Well, Kim, you don't have to worry about it until July 6th because that's when the bills come out. All right, we'll go to the next question. Thanks that for was, answering that, I had no idea. That was too <laughs> easy, that was too easy. All right, well, I think all of you can add to this. This is Omar from Washington, D.C., and he has asked, what's one thing you would recommend as a must-do for all students? Well, I mean, there's so many things. Of course, I'm not a student, but what I enjoy doing sure. uh, is I think that it's really important to get out and and experience the university uh, in all of its many ways. And so I think, I think as a student, you really, rather than just get, uh, to, to get uh, uh, found in one place or in, involved in one thing, I think it's very important, particularly during your first semester. And that's what we really are focused on. We want to get everyone acclimated to get a sense about the university so that it is, so that it's their place and that they have a real sense uh, of uh, what are the options in their life. And then after that, then you can start making the, the whole myriad of choices that we have for each and every student. Great. What do you think? Well, you know, the, of course, the most important thing is your education. So you come here and focus on that first. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing is we have WVU Adventures um, WV. And so we have Adventures in West Virginia where you can go and actually rent different equipment, very cost effective, because we want you to not just be on campus, we want mm -hmm. you to live here in the state of West Virginia and enjoy the state. And so we allow that to happen. So we ask you to participate in that. So we make sure you, you kind of know the city and the state that you're in. Absolutely, and it's a beautiful one to be in. It is, it? absolutely. 
Great. Corey, what do you think? Well, you know, I was thinking, I, you know, they're uh, easily to talk, I could easily talk about go to an athletic event to experience the excitement there or go to WVU up all night, but I think I, I'm going to choose something a little bit different and, and say every student their first year should make it a year of being uncomfortable. And uncomfortable meaning doing something so completely and radically different than what they've been used to doing because part of coming here is, to, as we've heard, is to experience something different but to grow the mind and so unless you're stretching your mind by being uncomfortable, I don't think there's, there's a, a good growth. So how do we make that growth sort of an exponential growth? Very good. What do you think, Savannah? All right, so this isn't just for your first year, but a four-year recommendation is study abroad. You yeah. have to Very go good. abroad. Yes. I was, I'd never been on a plane before, and when I first got on that plane and I landed in Uganda and I had that experience and I met these people, it absolutely opened my mind to a new way of thinking. And I know what a lot of people are thinking, you know, I may miss school you know, too much school, mm -hmm. I might have to take out loans to do it, but there's actually a lot of options. Uh, I got, I had a scholarship that covered my first study abroad experiences. There's a lot of scholarships available actually. And mm -hmm. also you can actually kind of do like an exchange where you can do it for a semester and take classes like through that university and then count for WVU. So there's so many different options, but going abroad and just having that international experience changed the trajectory of my career. So I'd say study abroad. Very good, well lots to do for sure. All right, so our next question is from Amy in St. Petersburg, Florida. What is the university doing to help leaders in the Greek system keep students safe? Dean Ferris, I know you put a lot of time into that. What's your answer for that? Well, so there are a number of things that we're doing and have done. I mean, we certainly have some, I'll say some required educational programs around alcohol on Title IX, on anti-hazing, hazing prevention. Um, we've got a new director of Greek life, Dr. Matthew Richardson, who's leading the charge on a Reaching the Summit campaign where we are going to be lifting up our fraternities mm -hmm. and sororities. Um, we also have a deferred rush, what we call deferred rush. So students, uh, first year students cannot uh, check out, join fraternities and sororities until at least their second semester of their first year on campus. Um, plus there are routine and regular t uh, ways we touch base with those new members who are coming into fraternities and sororities to make sure that we're paying attention to what they're doing and making sure that they have a good experience. But we also reach out mm -hmm. and, and are touching um, uh, the upper class students, again, to make sure that nothing's changed. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's something we take absolutely very seriously and, and we'll continue to stay on top of it. Great yeah, question. One of the things we take a lot of pride in is the fact that we are one of the safest college yeah. campuses in the country, absolutely. period. Um, and, and you think about it, there are 30,000 people in the city and there are 33,000 students, so we're, so we're really the most quintessential college town you can possibly imagine. Very safe. Uh, I joke about the fact that the only, uh, the only uh, unsafe thing for students is when I go out late at night. And, <laughs> get and they better watch, and, right? And get going to their, first, <laughs> their 21st birthday parties and stuff like that. But I, I, think that, I think that's important. So you start off with great mm -hmm. safety as a part of our culture. Our police chief just won the award as the, as the number one police chief in the country. Uh, and, and, and then we build on it by having a lot of uh, options. Um, and we, and we do believe in a balanced environment. You know, there are a lot of institutions in this country now, a lot of university presidents who think that um, fraternities and sororities, as just one example, mm -hmm. are no longer socially viable. We believe that almost every kind of social opportunity should be available to students, and we want to make sure that they have those kind of choices. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question. Kevin from Weirton, West Virginia. When do we get to move into our residence hall and what should we definitely bring with us? Well, I can tell you that honors move-in day is August 10th and our general move-in day is August the 11th. It's an exciting day when we welcome parents and students certainly to campus, but you guys probably know best what they definitely should bring and what they should leave at home. Well, Serene, let me also add in there different students may have a different move-in date based on some of their programs Absolutely. and so they will hear from that program when the best day for them to move in and we even time it down to when's the best time of day so not everyone's moving in at the same time but what to bring and what to leave at home we've got a web web page you go to the housing.wv.edu and there's information there um, but 
you're, you're moving in and the thing to remember is you, you may not necessarily need to bring everything right when you move in in August. Your winter clothes probably aren't needed right then and um, so you can bring those later on but um, you know, br you know, y you can't bring unsafe things. Um, sure. But if you're bringing clothes and dec room decorations and things like that, that's a good idea. But you know, loud, noisy things. No, we don't. You know, we're we're, we're watching out for for people who want to study. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> as as much as you want to bring your cat. You can't, sadly. I tried that, but, <laughs> but I'd say, like, um, coordinate with your roommate, right? So um, me and my roommate, our first year, we coordinated a micro fridge mm -hmm. uh, that we purchased and was already installed in our dorm, so we didn't have to fuss and fight with having, like, two or three fridges. Uh, definitely communicating with your roommate and talking to, um, like, upperclassmen and reading that list was uh, a great way that I didn't bring too much. So I'd say coordinating with your roommate is probably key on that one. Great. And the other thing I'd say is that you need to bring a great attitude. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, this is, a, this is going to be life changing for not just you, but for the family. And you need to encourage them, let them know this, that they've made a good decision to come to WVU, that we're going to make sure they get an excellent education, and we're going to give them opportunity. As much opportunity as they want to experience, we'll give it to them. Um, and so come with a good attitude, an open heart, and a willingness to be able to, co to cooperate with other people, and you'll have an excellent experience here at WVU. I think you're exactly right. And if you have questions after today's live stream, please know that we have lots of great options for you to join in. One of those ways is to join our Families of the WVU Class of 2022 Facebook group. To join, just follow the link in the, on the screen and know that you will be joined by over 1,100 families that are already engaging in that page. We'll jump into some more questions because we do have a lot. So Melissa, Ask, do students bring bikes to campus? Is there a safe place for them to store bikes? Well, yes, yeah, some students do bring bikes to campus. I will say we have a pretty hilly terrain, so, so um, you know, uh, we've got good rail trails where students can ride their bikes. We've got bike racks outside um, around campus, but mm -hmm. students um, can take their bicycles into their rooms. It crowds their room a little bit, but they're certainly allowed to store their bikes inside the room if they don't want to have them outside locked up to the bike racks outside. Very good. And this is probably a, one of my favorite questions because I love this event, but John in Virginia says, what is Welcome Week and is it mandatory for all freshman students? Well, uh, you know, we uh, decide that, uh, we've decided that we wanted to have one of the most welcoming institutions in the country. Absolutely. We want to make certain that every student feels comfortable, that they have every possible choice uh, in terms of the things that they want to try to do and that they can get at that early. Mm -hmm. And so we have created a welcome week that I think is probably as good as any uh, that I have ever seen. And part of it is all about getting students to meet each other, to understand what is happening on the campus, to understand all the options that they have, but also to, to move from that status of being a, a high school student to a college student. So we do have a lot of, um, of, of different opportunities for them to talk about what's college life like, uh, what are some of the challenges you're going to face, what is, what is it like when you have people um, from different backgrounds than you, uh, what are sure. all these kinds of things that are happening. It's, it certainly is not in any sense social engineering, it's about cultural uh, awareness in the very best sense of the word. Um, you know, I will, I will say this, uh, and I think that parents would probably appreciate this, uh, out of all the institutions I've, I've uh, served, I think this is the most uh, clear, clearly stated institution in terms of its belief that everyone has a right to, uh, to free speech, to free opportunity, that we are just not what you want to, by any stretch of the measure, call uh, a politically correct institution. We're a very solidly centered, academically focused institution in which we do have lots of fun. It is fun. Welcome Week's a great event. And it is really fun. And then, of course, I get asked all the time, you know, what, what's going to be at, what, what's it called? Ball Fest. Ball, Ball Fest, Fest. Yes. Which, is, which, is the, uh, which is the event in which we bring in bands. And I mean, I don't know the name of any of these. One was, one was Big Fat Elephant. Was that? Was that Cage, one? The Cage, Cage the Elephant. Cage the Elephant. Oh, I remember. You're a little far removed there. Then there, <laughs> then there was uh, Maroon 5, I knew. I mean, yes. I actually knew them, as a matter of fact. But, but they're, they're, I, they, they didn't bring in Beethoven or uh, Lawrence no, Welk, neither so one much. of them right now. What did you think of Welcome Week, Savannah? Oh man, I loved it. I attended Welcome Week when I didn't have to after my <laughs> freshman year. 
but I loved it. I have some of my best friends that you know I've had to say goodbye to recently. I can remember our first welcome week and getting to know them. And it's mm -hmm. like that kickstart, right? You're surrounded by all these people, and the university is basically giving you this big hug, and they're feeding you and they're playing you music. I mean, what's not the love? And it really like welcomes you and makes you feel included. And you'll make some great friends, and you'll get to know the people in your halls. You get to know the people in your um, in your major and just stuff like that. It's so integral and like really getting kind of, you know, introduced to mm -hmm. WVU. So I loved it. They fed me, they played me music. What's not the like? So you got to go on Mountaineer Field? Yeah, I got to, you get to go on Mountaineer Field. You get this really cool picture. It's state of West Virginia, right? Mm -hmm. You make the state of West Virginia. I mean, well, what, and you what, take we, selfies with yeah, Dr. Gee? Oh yeah, well, that's really cool. What, what, <laughs> what, what, that's super <laughs> cool, right? <laughs> yeah, what, 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 we, what, what we do is we, uh, we have one of the finest marching bands in the country. And they come in, they form the state of West Virginia, and we get all 5,000 plus of our students inside of that. Uh, it's just really a neat moment. It's a neat memory for it's everyone. beautiful, and they uh, always take a really nice picture, yeah. and everyone posts it everywhere. Yeah, and it's, it's really terrific. So, so we, we, one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to create a lot of memories for, for people so that when they start out, that they already have a lot of memories. It's, yes. You know, it's not that we just drop people off and say goodbye. It's that we really, I love that term, Savannah. It's the university giving our students a big hug. And feeding them. You're like, it's all about well, you, I've yeah. noticed that. <laughs> I think there's a trend. I, mean, I do not know how many times we've talked about food already. <laughs> yes, we have great food, everyone. We have uh, good food, but I mean, we do do other things. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, let's take another question. Everett asked this question. I'm a deaf student entering WVU. Are there any clubs available for me to join? Well, I'll say every club's available for you to right. join. And so, so we will certainly help out and make accommodations, but we've got club 400 plus clubs and organizations. Yeah. And one thing about my office is we make sure that we give all resources that you need. So whatever you find that there may, you may need for whatever program you want to be a part of, we'll make sure you have the, the amenities to get there. So we want you to feel as though you're a part of the campus because you are. You belong here. We want you here. We want you to feel welcome. And just let us know. We'll make sure you're accommodated for. So we want to, you know. Very good. Yeah. Great. Remember, while we're answering questions live on the air, there's a group of experts also answering questions in the comments section. So ask away. We'll get you an answer, whether it's live on the air or from one of our behind the scenes experts. Panelists, we'll go ahead and go to our next question. How do students get to and from campus when the PRT is closed? Robin wants to know that. <laughs> Everyone looks at me. Well, what do you uh, think? Well, you probably oh use it man. more. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, I've had to do that several times. You know, sometimes things happen. Uh, we're actually updating the system right now. So uh, that should happen a little less often. But when that happens, you have so many options. You have the mountain line bus that actually has uh, several stops around campus that you can take. Uh, you also have uh, shuttles that shuttle you from the PRT station uh, to other PRT stations that kind of keep that flow going even if the PRT is broke down. Uh, me personally, I just walk everywhere, you know. It's usually pretty beautiful. Um, it's good exercise, keep off that freshman 15. Uh, but there's just like so many different options from the bus systems and walking in campus is actually uh, surprisingly accessible. Mm -hmm. So you have several options there in case. Well, and every once in a while, uh you know, I live on the university campus, as I joke in subsidized public housing, and uh, <laughs> and uh, every once in a while, uh, when I see students standing out at the bus, I just stop and they'll all pile in the car. It's great fun. We have. Have you ever filed in his car before? Yes. Yes, I have gotten yeah, in his car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he opened the door for me. He's yeah. a gentleman. Oh, how very, nice! I was very kind, but yeah, you know, I mean, I, it's a very friendly, it's a very friendly community, and so, uh, and I always like to get a chance to connect with as many students as I possibly can, so there are a number of ways you can do that. But we do have great transportation. Mm -hmm. We and do. access through the, their ID, right? That's the access yes, they you have. Just swipe your so ID. you just swipe your ID and, and you're free. on the bus. Super easy. Yep. All right, well, I think this question is actually for me. It's from a mom, um, Deva. Our summer was set before my daughter decided on WVU. How important is it to participate in summer activities such as new student orientation? 
New student orientation is critical and we encourage parents to come to new student orientation. As all of you know, we have a program planned for parents just like students and so we really want students to come, um, be part of our community, um, be part of our campus life and truly you'll learn a lot and you'll have a good time at new student orientation. So make sure that you sign up to come with your student. But you know, I think it's really important for you to make a point about the fact that we think um, not in terms of the student, but in terms of the family. Absolutely. I mean, every, everyone, w when your student is here, uh, you are part of our family here, and we're part of yours, by the mm -hmm. way. And so, uh, so any time that parents can come to participate, I'm not one of the, you know, there are a lot of university presidents will say, hey, look, uh, drop your kid off and then let them come home at Thanksgiving and that's it. I think that um, what we really are trying to do is, is to get parents as, as involved as we can. Mm -hmm. The stronger our parent involvement, the better our university is going to be. I agree. You know, parents truly are partners here at WBU, and I always say, don't think of it as a time when you drop them off. We want them to come back for Fall Family Weekend. Families are always welcome here, and truly through the Mountaineer Parents Club, they have a home away from home, just like their students do. So. Thank you for that. Well, uh, we don't want to have them uh, coming and moving in with their kids for three no, or four don't weeks. No, don't, don't, don't move in. Don't move in. in. Yeah, don't move in. <laughs> <laughs> Although I nearly did it with my daughter, so it was. So it's you're horrible to leave. That. It's horrible to leave your child. I tell you, it really is. They'll get through it, though, right? They will. Oh yeah, everyone does get through it, and then, and then once they get through it, um, and their child gets through it too. You know, but there's there are mm -hmm. some tears, but we work we we work very hard at. Uh, making students feel very, very comfortable, and parents to feel comfortable about leaving their students. Um, but there are a few moments, and, and that's just part of the, the, the nature of, uh, and the rhythm of life. It's very natural, you're right. So Jessica from Flemington, New Jersey asks, what will my first semester be like? Fabulous. What do you think? <laughs> Amazing, fabulous. Well, what do you think, Savannah? A long time ago, but uh, that's, that's kind of on you. It's what you make it. The great thing about WVU is you can be any way you want. Now you have to take some general classes and I'm not gonna lie, like getting into college classes and realizing, whoa, this isn't high school anymore is challenging. Uh, but your first semester, you'll be faced with a lot of challenges. We'll be faced with a lot of uh, new things. You will be, you'll meet people from different cultures, different backgrounds. You'll have your mind open to new ideas and uh, you'll take classes that, that you love. You'll take classes that you have to trudge through. Uh, you'll go to different club meetings and find out what you like and what you don't. Um, my advice to you on that first semester, it's just like getting kind of like, it's just kind of like thrown into it and you're gonna have to embrace it, right? You're just gonna have to take the good and the bad and you have to go out and you have to just do the best you can and know that we're here, here to help, right? So don't be scared to use our resources. We have tutoring, uh, we have counseling people for you to talk to if you're frustrated or stressed. I did that. And just keeping an open mind and uh, that first semester is like fun and overwhelming and um, absolutely probably one of my favorite moments at WVU is that entire semester and just getting like settled in. So that's kind of what you should expect. Sure. Dean, what do you think? First semester for college students. Well, I think the, one of the big things that happens first semesters is what I call self-management. Um, a student has to learn that from the get-go because they're on their own. And so there's no parent around to make sure you go to bed at night or what time you go to bed, what time to get up. It's time to eat. It's time to study. You got to go to class. And so that's all self-management. And, and part of the success of that first semester is how well you can jump on board and immediately start to manage your own life and not depend on someone else to prompt you or to write in your planner or in your calendar on your phone when your test is due or when the papers do. So to me, it's, ex it's all those exciting things, but managing all those things that are coming at you and, and taking full advantage of everything that's there. Great advice. All right, next question. Melissa from New Jersey. We're coming from a distance and don't have a lot of room to bring everything for move-in day. Can we have items shipped to the school to be ready for move-in day? Yes. <laughs> The answer, yes. After August, you should plan to have those things arrive after August 1st, but th you're, you can ship things, and I, I will also sort of promote the local economy. If, if you're going out and buying it and shipping it, you can just come to town and, and certainly do that shopping here, but if you do have particular things you want to ship, it's a whole lot easier just to not pack, not, not to throw it in the mm -hmm. back of your car, but go ahead and ship it here, and it'll be waiting when students arrive. 
great. Thank you, Dean Ferris. Well, you can do it like I did when I moved my daughter in. I, I, I rented uh, two guys in a truck. <laughs> Or that works too. Yeah, I tell you something, it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. I was hated by every parent there. So maybe that's not good no, advice. No, 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 I would not advise that. Okay. <laughs> We're actually going to head to our second video and final break of our live stream. And actually, President Guy, during our break, our viewers are going to get a chance to see what happened when you went back to school shopping last year. Oh, yes. Everyone needs to buy stuff for school. And I wanted to buy some stuff for myself too because school is starting and I am so excited to have everyone here. I'm gonna go get my trapper keeper. I'm gonna go get my pencil box. I'm gonna make certain that I've got everything ready so that when all of you come, that we have a wonderful time together. So you're gonna help me and we're gonna do a little shopping today, okay? That sounds like a plan Here we go. So where are the bow ties? We're headed back this way. Okay, great. The bow tie world has come around can find it anywhere, right? I think you've helped bring okay. it back. Yeah, thank you, my friend. Wait a second, let's, let's stop. Let's take a look at those backpacks. Oh, right we're, going to, we're going to take a backpack here. I'm using my dad's credit card. I just want all of you to know. One blue duct tape, one gold buck duct <laughs> Now here we go. Oh my gosh. Flip flops are one of the uh, essential items to look cool. I'm going to stick some of those in here. Those are great. And look at all this other school supply stuff. Do people still use spiral notebooks? They stuff? do. They absolutely do. So we've got one blue and we've got one gold. So that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> perfect. So you're getting ready for the K-12 system then? Yes. Right? So. I work for preschoolers okay. within Harrison yeah. County. So I have four or five-year-olds. Yeah, and I, I, I work with 18 to 25-year-olds. What do you think? They're about the same. <laughs> My father from another mother. <laughs> there you go, right there. That's great. I can't tell the difference. Oh. We have found the staple of any college student. I love mac and cheese. Tell me about uh, your graduate program. What are you going to be Counseling. doing? Counseling. Counseling, good. Yes. And how do you like the university? I love it. Has it been great? <laughs> yep. The last thing you need to do is you need to get art. Art makes you serene. Art also makes it fun. Anyway, art, art. I'm exhausted. It's a big yeah, store. It is a big store, and we bought a lot of stuff. So thanks for doing this for me. I really appreciate it. Was, it. it was truly my and, pleasure. And it's great to know that our students are coming back on campus and that they're going to have a great time. So anyway, hey, let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> Once again, thank you for joining us, our Ask Us Anything live event. Worried it may be too late to be a mountaineer? You actually have until August 1st. That will be the last day that we accept students for this fall. So let's go ahead and jump into our next question. So Laurie from Williamstown, New Jersey, are there counselors on campus for students to talk to? Yes. So we have a counseling center that's on campus for our students to use. Um, we've got licensed psychologists, we've got psychiatrists available to our students, and actually they're available 24 hours a day. So there's certainly routine appointments, but if there's a crisis or something that happens in the middle of the night, they dial the regular Carew Center counseling phone line and someone will answer. Great, thank you. Next question. And of course, I mean, uh, we have to say, uh, we assume that that's about just general counseling, but we also have tremendous number of academic counselors. We don't, we don't want our students to be without, uh, without direction. And that's part of the purpose of our first semester is we really want to get them acclimated to the university to find their space. That's the reason we, we really um, limit the number of things that they can join or that they ought to be doing in terms of their individual portfolio, but rather it's really all about acclimation and finding their place and getting their opportunities outlined. Very good. So Jeannie from Los Angeles, California, what are some of the benefits of joining WVU Honors College? What do you think? How much time do we have? <laughs> So all the time you need. <laughs> so I was in the Honors College student for four years, and it's an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, so you get the opportunity to uh, live in one of the uh, two dorms. So we have our Honors College dorm on our uh, downtown campus and our uh, Lincoln Hall on our 
Evansdale campus. And the great thing about those communities is even if you don't live in those halls, those live learn communities are open to you. So the Honors College offers all these dinners with professors. We offer uh, uh, certain events that you can go to. Oh, so the live learn community is very robust. Um, some other benefits is you can um, have priority registrations. You actually register before uh, regular college seniors, which is a really cool thing. And what I love about the Honors College, it just um, challenges you to a new way of thinking. So the classes aren't necessarily harder, uh, but they involve a lot of group work, a lot of dynamic thinking, projects, uh, public speaking, things like that. And it also, uh, with our partner with Aspire, uh, you also get an opportunity to talk with people uh, very closely and work with people very closely when applying to national scholarships. So when it gets that time, uh, you kind of have like a leg up and you are able to speak and kind of have your foot in the door when it comes to that type of stuff. So I'd say that the Honors College is a great place for people who are really academically minded and I absolutely love my four years there. So that's why You I'd know, the that. purpose of an Honors College um, is to create a college within the university so that if we have 5,000 uh, students and we have 1,000 in our Honors College, it gives them an opportunity to have a, have a university experience within the university uh, much smaller, much more intimate, much more engaged. Uh, doesn't mean to say that our other 4,000 students aren't equally well taken care of, they are, mm -hmm. but, but it does provide a significant opportunity to have different options that you may not have um, uh, if you're not within the Honors College. Good point. So Cheryl in Charleston, West Virginia wants to know, what type of computer should my son bring with him to campus this fall? Well, what do you think? Well, huh? well uh, so I, I will uh, broadly say it depends on the college that the student yes. is in because some colleges have different requirements, whether it's a, uh, a Mac or a PC. Um, and so some of that information you can go to the college's website and some of that information is listed there. Or when you come to new student orientation, you can talk to your, your academic home and, or, or our information technology team who will be able to help out. Absolutely. So Alexis wants to know, when is the first day of class? We should all have this memorized. August Come 15th, on, everybody. Wednesday. August 15th. Right? August 15th, Wednesday. That's, right. That's, right. That's, yeah. right. That's on a Wednesday. That's on a Wednesday. August so, 15th. so we we have changed that rather dramatically. So we bring students in on the weekend, and then we have three or four days of of orientation, as we talked about, rather than mm -hmm. just say, come in, move in on a Sunday, and and mm -hmm. get uh, right into class on a Monday. That's the whole purpose of our of our beginning uh, orientation program is to really get people as it says, oriented. Right, so they can and find Welcome their way. Week really acclimates them before they begin classes on that Wednesday. Okay. Super, so Catherine in Steubensville, Ohio wants to know, what will happen at orientation and will I get to see my room? What do you think, Dean? Well, for orientation, there's a lot that goes on. You're meeting your academic sure. uh, uh, family, you're meeting some of your residence hall family, you're registering and finalizing your class schedule. Um, some students may opt to take the Alex math placement test, um, and so they'll have the opportunity to do that. I think there's a what they call a base camp program, so some students may uh, decide to opt for that opportunity, and that's what uh, Misha spoke about a little while ago about Adventure West Virginia. It's a, it's a one-day taste of that, but they still have an opportunity for that before the summer programs kick off. Um, and, and certainly there's ways to visit campus, visit other parts of campus, to meet with financial aid folks, to meet with the accessibility folks, to, to make sure students are set, learn about other services. Th but actually seeing their specific residence hall room, I'll get back to that little piece of that, it's not likely because, um, uh, it's possible, but it's not likely you'll be able to certainly see a residence hall room in your residence hall. But we have summer camps and conferences that take place during the summer, and so if there are other students or guests that are on campus, we're not gonna let you, uh, we don't want anyone to, to walk in on them while, while they're here for a summer camp, as well as we use some of those rooms for summer orientation. So, so we'll have certainly a sample room for them to see. Very good. Um, Jean wants to know, what is the ratio of in-state to out-of-state students? Well, at the undergraduate level, it's about 45 in-state and 55 out-of-state. Um, and we like to keep it about there. You know, we tell everyone that we have students from 55 counties in West Virginia. 
have students from 50 states. We have students from 115 countries. We speak in 100 different languages. So this is one of the most multidimensional institutions um, in the country, i.e., so the students come from different backgrounds, different experiences, different parts of the country and different parts of the world. And we think that that's all part of the most, one of the most important parts of the learning experience. You know, you learn from each other. It's this kind of tug and pull you get into when you're in a, in a collegiate environment. And so we, we believe that that ratio is so important to maintain because it gives us a sense about, um, uh, it gives our students a real sense of opportunity they may not have had otherwise. Absolutely. So Jason in Massachusetts wants to know, what are some of the options for transportation to and from the Pittsburgh airport? I get this question a lot. Oh, well, answer it then. I, it's a fun <laughs> question for me. You know why I get it a lot? Because parents want to know how to get their students home. And that is a good question. But we work cooperatively with our mountain um, line bus system here. And so the mountain line has a gray line that runs twice a day to the Pittsburgh International Airport. It's a great service. I've done it before. It drops students right off at the terminal. And so it makes it nice and easy. So parents can sign up for that online. I think it's a low cost of about $25. And um, students, like I said, just get on the bus and take it to the Pittsburgh Airport. So. We get students home for Thanksgiving, winter break, and spring break, so don't worry about that. And then and talk about the bus services we provide uh, to various uh, uh, sure. points around the country. Absolutely. So three times a year when our residence halls close, Thanksgiving break, winter break, and spring break, the Mountaineer Parents Club organizes bus transportation for students to go home during the holidays, mainly um, the East Coast. We make several stops. and. Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, New York, New Jersey, and it's a great service. It picks students up on the downtown campus and on the Evansdale campus, and it, I always say it's not door-to-door -door service, but getting your student a couple hours closer home makes the drive much more manageable. So we do our best to truly help parents and students get home during those times of year. So we don't want anyone to struggle with how they're gonna get to campus and get home to their families, that's for sure. Sabrina, if I can add Please. too, we've got a small airport here in town and it's got connecting service from Morgantown to Pittsburgh and Mo Morgantown to BWI in Baltimore, outside of Baltimore. So those are also options of how people can get out to other areas if they're looking to fly. All right. So Dina from Inwood, West Virginia, is there a medical clinic on campus? <laughs> You know, that, that is a great question. We happen to have one of the largest, most sophisticated academic medical centers in the country. So we have great health care, but our medical center also is responsible for our student health clinic. So uh, for any parent who's concerned about whether or not their sons and daughters are going to have great health care, there are very few, if any, places they can come where they'll get better health care. They go to the student clinic. If they have some, uh, some significant problem, they will move them immediately to our big hospital at Ruby, uh, our children's hospital, or whatever we need to move them to. And it's, um, it's, uh, uh, it's a real solace to me, if I were a parent, to know that uh, my child has access to remarkable health care immediately. Dean, did you want to add anything to that? No, no, it's, I mean, and it's convenient. I'll add the, the, the student clinic that Dr. Gee was talking about is conveniently located. It's on the Evansdale campus next to our student recreation center. Um, so if student, people have been to campus um, and they see our student recreation fields, it's right there. So it's easy to get to by PRT, by bus. Um, and those physicians in there are great. And, it's, and they've got convenient long right. hours, and so it's a, it's a great clinic. You're right. Um, yep, coming from a student whose immune system is absolutely terrible. Um, Shocked. I, <laughs> Shocked from all that food you've been eating. Yeah, all that food, <laughs> yeah. But um, I've, I've visited Student Health many times. I had to go to the Mountaineer Pharmacy, which is a pharmacy right next to Student Health. Uh, what I love about uh, you know Student Health, and not only Student Health, but I've actually had to go to Ruby a couple times, is they're very student-minded. So students are very apprehensive to go to the doctor. Even though I want to be one, I'm absolutely scared to death. So um, Ruby and the Student uh, Health Center is like really um, student-minded so you get that experience they know that you're scared and they know you don't have your parents with you so I've uh, found it like really comforting how awesome the staff was and like visiting those places and giving you the help that you need and kind of walking you through some processes you may not be familiar with 
and we hear that a lot, so thank you. So George in Georgia wants to know, how do students get important information they need to know about? Well, this George is, that's which is my first name, so George, it, <laughs> George from to George, George, George to George, George in Georgia. Uh, so we've got lots of ways to get information out to students. I mean, certainly you know social media. You found, about, you found out about this program tonight, probably through social media or by email. Uh, twice a week we've got a program uh, that, uh, a news, I'll say it's called U News, that we send specifically out to students on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, the the old-fashioned signs are posted. Students that are living in the residence hall have RAs and resident assistants who hold floor meetings. Students in the Honors College get information through the Honors College. So there's lots of different ways if a student is engaged and is aware of their surroundings and looks at emails and looks at their social media accounts, they will be able to get lots of great information. And students should set up and check their mix accounts regularly. Absolutely. Would you agree with that? Check your email. <laughs> I've almost like lost scholarships and job opportunities because I neglect my email, so check your email. Good advice. Okay, panelists, we're gonna take two more questions. And remember, if you have questions, please share them in the comments section. We'll pick one to answer live. So let's get started with the second to the last question that we have here. Um, my son needs a if my son needs a prescription filled, I think we kind of got to this, but can he get a local doctor at the university to fill them? But this is a great question because this parent is asking from Denmark, so I can only imagine why this would be such a concern for her. But you mentioned the Mountaineer Pharmacy. Do you just want to reiterate that quickly? Yeah, yeah. Even though I'm not from Denmark, being from Southern West Virginia, <laughs> sometimes you feel like you're from Denmark. And um, I, uh, I, the first time I went to Student Health and tried to get something filled at the Mountaineer Pharmacy, I was scared to death. I was calling my mom. I was like you know, walk me through it, but again, like right there on Evansdale campus, they have the Student Health Center and they have the Mountaineer Pharmacy and they're so friendly and they walk you through everything and they can transfer a uh, prescription. They know like what you should do with your health card, which I didn't really know what to do with my insurance card at first. So they definitely walk you through it. And it's a really friendly place and um, highly recommended. Well, uh, you know, everything that we do in this uh, Student Health Center is really calibrated to be student friendly. And uh, so that's what people are trained to do, and that's what they do do, and do it very effectively, I might add. Yes, they do. Well, thank you for joining us this evening. We have Lisa, who's just tuned in from New York, and Bob from Baltimore for joining us. We're going to ask, actually, um, our last and final question of the evening. Uh, I think probably all of you have something to share with um, this parent, I believe, Jen, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Do you have any tips for parents of students who are sending their first child off to college. Why don't you start? Well, I, you know, I only have one child, a daughter, and uh, I gave all sorts of tips before I sent her off to college. Now I don't give any tips, as a matter of fact, because I realize that it's a very, it's a very uh, uh, strange time in many ways, uh, empty nest, a variety of other things. And even though I was living on a university campus, it was very, very difficult for me. But saying that, I think you want to keep in touch with your kids. You want them to feel like that they that they have uh, uh, a way for 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 you to know what they are doing. Uh, I think you want to be engaged with them as much as you possibly can. But the most important thing you've got to learn to let them go too. Mm -hmm. You know they're no longer uh, in your house, and so you have to understand that they are young adults and they're going to they're going to start taking responsibility for themselves. And that is this magic moment that really occurs in a college when all of a sudden uh, your, your, your young daughter or young son goes away to college and then when they come home uh, at Thanksgiving, all of a sudden they're a much different child. And, they, and I've had a lot of mothers weep, uh, weep later on. They say, well, gee, you know, they said that they wanted to go home and they met the university because it does become their home. And that is what we strive for. We strive for this university to be their home, not, comp uh, not competing with parents, but as a place that is safe and secure and understanding where their friends uh, come, uh, where their friends are here and where their ideas are flowing. That's, uh, that's what universities are all about. Mm -hmm. Misha, do you have any tips for parents? I do. I, I would say the first thing is just kind of breathe, right? 
the reality is you prepared them for this. I mean, the whole purpose of them going to school for all these years is for them to be at their very best. And now you're giving them that opportunity. And I know it won't be easy, as President Gee has mentioned, but the reality is you have trained them well. And you have to take some type of resolve in that to say that I know my child's going to go and get the best education. They're going to seek out all the opportunities. They're going to check in at home. You can kind of make that rule before they leave, right? And at the same time that they're going to grow because you want them to grow into be great adults, and we're going to help them do that. So, great breathe, advice, and understand what you've already done. Yeah, great advice. The breathing, especially. The breathing, yeah. <laughs> Dean, what do you think? Well, I, I think it's good for parents to constantly remind their children that they still love them, um, and I think it's important um, a, as you let them go to to remember that they're going to make mistakes. They may take a different direction and may disappoint you, but they still need to know that you love them unconditionally um, and and you're always going to have a hug ready for them um, and so I think that's important the other the, the second piece of advice is send chocolate chip cookies because they will become very popular with their roommates and their sweet mates and so all always. those fun little things surprises you might send home are always helpful too always Savannah what do you think send food yes definitely <laughs> Uh, student perspective, there's going to be some growing pains, right? So you all may be at each other's throats a couple of times. Me and my mom, there'd be some radio silence on the phone, you know. But uh, one thing that I'd advise like a parent is just, you know, you know, check in on them and, and be engaged and, and know that they're, that, that you taught them, you know, they, they, you know, they're your child and uh, they're doing this to make you proud too. So whatever like route they go or however they change uh, their, their path of their destination know that they're doing it and they're they're thinking of you like even if I didn't call my mom I was thanking her and also make that rule about calling because I call my mama every day even though it it's still been four years I call my mom every day so you know there's gonna be some growing pains and be patient with each other that's what I'd say yeah and don't turn their uh, don't turn their bedroom into a sauna <laughs> until, <laughs> until uh, maybe the second year I think that they that always would, come home right yeah they do we hope so <laughs> well and my tip of course for parents is to make sure that you join the Mountain Your Parents Club. We want you to be part of our family and our community, and we know that the communication that we're sending truly helps us support our students. So from all of us on tonight's panel, thank you for joining us for our first live Ask Us Anything. We hope that we were able to answer all of your questions, but if you have more, know that we have many options for you to connect with us. On the screen, you're going to see links to some of those key areas. Feel free to look there for additional information. And if you have more questions, you can always reach out to us at 304-293 2121. So one final time for our panelists, President Gee, thank you very much for being You're here. Honored to be here. Dean of Students Corey Ferris, our Vice President for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, Misha Poor, thank you so much. For me. And to our most recent WVU grad and Fulbright Scholar Savannah Lusk, congratulations. Oh, don't flatter me. Like and that. thank you. Well, we're You're glad right. you're still here. And have a great evening. And we'll, we're excited to welcome you here um, to our Morgantown campus. And you're going to hear this a lot, um, but it's a great night to be a mountaineer wherever you may be. And we will see you soon, class of 2022. Thank you.